Hello all, yeah, Robert Frula here. I'm gonna talk about cl uh, cognitive client to cloud architecture. And specifically, we're gonna look at automated Wi-Fi ops today. It's gonna to be a quick video, a whirlwind tour of that. So we're gonna to have to go really fast. So we've jumped right in. And uh, so that last question, um, while we're not gonna focus on, you know, it's a specific set of clients per se, but when I show dashboards, right, it's all location aware. So if you see a dashboard, wherever you were to go in this location, this hierarchy, that's going to be, you know, you're going to be seeing what's going on uh, on these various dashboards. So it's not tracking clients per se, but it is specific to locations. If you were to go to the top of the hierarchy, then you would see all the issues throughout the whole enterprise. So um, quickly, the client journey dashboard here, we're, we're looking at is we're looking at any type of connectivity issues. So whether it's an association, authentication, or a network issue, uh, we're going to be able to bubble that up and we're gonna say which clients are having connectivity issues. And this is real time, right? So we have a baseline, we can go back in time, but what you see here are clients that are actually having trouble currently. And if we, uh, yeah, we can see baseline there, you can go back out to a month. But if we click on the authentication issues, we can see six clients that are having a problem with authentication. And if we go to the right, we can see the last failure, incorrect PSK, ePoll, or a radius server unresponsive. So you don't really have to go much further than that unless you, um, you, know, you want to look at the packet captures because we're doing packet captures for all of those and putting them up to packets so that visual packet capture analysis is there for you. Um, now here, the performance dashboard. And what we're doing here is looking at client performances and network performances, right? Uh, we have a uh, low RSSI. We have a number of clients there, 233 that are experiencing low RSSI currently. Uh, we're also going to look at, uh, we'll look at low data rate and we'll look at high retry rate and then sticky clients. Are those we'll drill down on the terrible, Robert? low RSSI clients and we can see here, we got, uh, you can see to the right, you have the uh, RSSI and for Olivia's tablet, we have uh, NEG77 is the RSSI. Now here, we click on that to get Ava's recommendation or her automatic root cause analysis. And for the low RSSI, it's poor coverage. That's what uh, Ava's um, returning as a potential root cause. If we click on the light bulb, how do I fix this? And now Ava's gonna return uh, remediation recommendations. And the remediation recommendation in this case is to add more access points. And so the inference there is that the network is already optimized. Uh, so there's it, basically Ava saying, you know, at this point, you really got to consider adding another access point. And sometimes that is what you have to do if you, you know, you have poor coverage. So a reasonable recommendation there. All right, I'm going to move on now quickly. By the way, Quran is going to go deeper into the performance dashboard and the application dashboard. So I'm going fast here. Hey, Robert, uh, Robert uh, on that first page you showed us, are those metrics configurable? So say we're more concerned hey. about NEG67. Yeah, uh, right, they are. If we go to the top of the uh, hierarchy, you're able to set the threshold for the low RSSI indication, as well as uh, there's one other, Murthy, if you're here, um, I, it might be the, re the data rate. So the two, the data rate and the RSSI are configurable, and you would do that at the, higher, the top of the hierarchy. But most aren't, in these dashboards, most of the, um, there's not much to configure. And even the baselines, it's all basic self-learned. Uh, and so you don't have to configure your baselines. Uh, they just uh, are going to be um, derived based on usage. And then the outliers, you know, would be anything, um, you know, anomalies, weight, uh, the deviation from the baseline. So generally speaking, there's not much to uh, configure there. But you, you can configure it if it's something that's yeah. different than what you would expect in your own environment. Right, you can. You can. Okay. Uh, I think default might be 65, next 65, but you could set that at the next 62 or next 60, whatever, or next 70. Um, I would assume that you guys are using deep packet inspection for the uh, application recognition, right? When it comes to the application experience, correct? Am I correct yeah. on that? Yeah, we are. And the next speaker, Karan, is going to drill down into that. So I'm going to go really fast on this dashboard. But okay. he'll talk about the methodology and the models we're using there to derive quality. Of experience. I was wondering, from a privacy perspective, what you guys do to you know protect the, you know the privacy of the you know users and clients on the network while doing DBI at the same time. 
Yeah, well, you could turn it off. You don't have to enable it for those that are concerned about that. But I should mention the, another concern for privacy. Remember that automatic packet capture that we do for the client journey dashboard? Uh, for that, what we're doing is we are stripping the payload and then we're encrypting that before we put it up into the cloud. So we do, you know, do they, we take care of that concern. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, here we can see yeah, beyond the applications you see in the dashboard, we can configure, and again, Karan's gonna go over this, so I'll go fast, but you also have the ability to customize. So you can add other applications here. And so we see that we have a problem. Red indicates that one or more clients is having a quality of experience issue. So if we drill down on that, we'll see a number of clients, we'll scroll down and we'll look for an example of one that's really having a problem. And that would be Isabella's phone. And it was like 37% of the time, poor quality of experience. So drill on on that. And again, Ava is going to return some uh, automatic root cause analysis. Um, and there we have a poor coverage and also high retry rate. Again, if we look to the right, click on the light bulb, and we'll do that for the high retry rate, we'll get a recommendation. Now here, again, it was fully aware of what the configuration is and the recommendation is to enable auto channel. So the inference there is that you probably have a lot of CCI because you have too many APs in the vicinity on the same channel. By auto, uh, enabling uh, auto channel, we'll avoid some of that co-channel interference. So those are the three dashboards and it's part of the network assurance. It's all automated, right? It's part of our network assurance offering. But this is all relatively passive, right? We're not injecting traffic. Um, oh, before I move on, all right, the, the baseline, I want to talk about that. We're also tracking uh, latency for your network services. So, and here we're just going to look at an example where we're going to look at the baseline for AAA and we'll go back for one month. And we'll look for outliers. So here we're going to go like late May and we see a big outlier there. So click that and see the clients that have, would have experienced high latency there with AAA. So it's not just real time. You have the ability to go back and do some uh, troubleshooting, right? Go back in time there. So yeah, again, these three dashboards, it's the, that's the passive part of network assurance where we're, you know, we're not injecting traffic. We're not exercising the network. We're just observing. And in some cases, um, well, in all cases doing root cause analysis and then some cases offering remediation recommendations. Now we'll move on to the active part of network assurance, where we're going to take a, the um, a multifunction radio. Most of the APs that we offer have multifunction radios. And what we'll do is we'll instantiate a virtual client and that, on that multifunction radio. And then we'll have that client go out and exercise the network from the virtual client out to the cloud. So here you select the frequencies and the SSIDs. And if you have captive portal, either it built in or third party, test that. Uh, then the, here we have you know, the application. So what we're gonna do here is actually go out and do page pulls from these applications. So we'll get uh, response times. And if anything fails here, right, we're gonna be able to send an alert to the person or the people that are responsible for that part of the network. So it's proactive in that way. We have simulated voice. We have some throughput tests as well, WAN and wireless LAN. You can schedule these for, to run before the bulk of the workforce comes in or during the day. It's just another client, right? Doing upload a doc, uploading a doc, downloading a doc, doing a voice call, whatever. Um, so it's non you know, service interrupting. And uh, you could even do baselining. You have a complaint about voice in an area. You could do calls in that area. Green here for the results, all good. If you see an orange, that means that there is a problem with one or more of the test cases. We can look at who's testing, what's getting tested. You get the association, you get DHCP response time, gateway response time, et cetera, DNS, when latency, and now here application. So we have orange. So one or more of the applications was an issue. In this case, it was Salesforce. And so the IT, right, would have been alerted for that part of the network or who's ever responsible for that, you know, location. And that way they can get ahead of it and then you know, email the users and say, hey, you know, we know we have a problem with Salesforce. Well, we're looking at it. We'll update you shortly. And of course, the, you have your simulated voice that's over Wi-Fi and then your throughput for uh, the internet as well as the over, over Wi-Fi. So it's pretty comprehensive, right? Client to cloud, This in this case, virtual client to cloud. But we're trying to make sure that we 
have um, you know all the SSIDs, all the radios, right? All the applications, they're always available, uh, always performing the, as expected. If they're not, you know, we can get on top of that. So uh, next thing I wanna do is talk about uh, cognitive maps. So the oh, purpose of cognitive follow? maps is really to help with a, a correlation between an issue or issues and location. So you have your typical APs where you normally see heat maps. Of course, we can do heat maps, but today we're gonna look at this correlation, the ability to correlate issues with uh, location. So you can- Robert, I think yep. there was a question, but who wanted to jump in here? Sorry, that was me there. So just with that virtual client testing, I'm assuming that's going to the next nearest AP that it can hear to test against? That's right. You choose which APs, but to be comprehensive, you could schedule it basically. So you could have every AP, eventually every radio get tested from an adjacent AP. So we take the, the multifunction radio, instantiate that virtual client, and then connect to a nearby AP and run these tests and, and so on. And you can uh, so you could schedule it so that you actually test every radio, you know, every um, SSID, uh, if you want to be really comprehensive, and you know, all the applications that you would use. Perfect. All right. So yeah, so here we're going to look for, I clicked on authentication. So you see the client show up with red. So that shows you where the clients are having issues with authentication. And here it's not located to a specific area, but uh, this can help with you know, getting to root cause if we can uh, find that the problem is associated with one part of the network you know, or one AP that's running one SSID, et cetera. So last thing I wanna talk about uh, before I turn it over to Quran is uh, hitless upgrade. So again, automated Wi-Fi ops, that's the theme here, uh, client to cloud, and so, this feature, it just it, it allows you to schedule an upgrade during the day because uh, we're going to do it in a way that we're not going to create any coverage holes. And when you schedule these updates, you do have the ability to be selective in terms of like which build to which model. You have that level of customization, which we don't really see most customers require. Generally speaking, we upgrade all different models to the same version of code, but you do have that capability here. So that's it for this section for me. So are there any other questions? I do have a quick one that's not quite related. Um, can you clarify, does Arista, I could have swore at one point they had something that's like a VLAN concentrator um, mm. as part of the solution. You know, if you yeah. were migrating away from central controllers, you don't want to redo your L2 uh, topology and, you know, VLAN concentration strategy is that? Still yeah. the case, or am I remembering wrong? Uh, yeah, that's been deprecated because you know we went away from that multi-service um, platform, which was a you know basically a tunnel aggregator. But now we use VXLAN, uh, standard-based tunneling, back to our switches. So the, that's for the data, right? You can drop the data off locally, of course. Cloud APs that would the the default would to drop the uh, you know VLAN traffic off locally. But as you point out there, Lee, I know you we're not going to do that in a lot of the uh, control-based architectures. We're going to tunnel that traffic back. So you, our APs now, uh, you can build a VXLAN tunnel to our switches so you can decide which SSID gets tunneled where in your network. But if I don't have your switches, I'm SOL. Yeah, I think it, yeah, 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 for VXLAN tunneling, I do, and somebody can correct me here in the audience, I do believe that's, right now, that's not going to work with other switches. There's, is it? Yeah, so let, let me answer that question. So basically it is standard-based standard-based VXLAN tunneling. So any switch or any device which can terminate VXLAN, but at the same time be able to bridge back. So you could have a traffic coming from one AP, wanting to go to another AP, but you want to bring it to a central point and then send it out. So if you have that scenario, and if you are capable of VXLAN to VXLAN bridging, there is no restriction. It's a standard-based VXLAN to VXLAN uh, bridging. If you can do that, Practically any switch will work. Otherwise, there are some very low cost Arista switches which are actually capable of doing this. You can hang that switch off of an aggregation or a core layer and have that do the tunneling for you. Thank Great. you. Thank you.